Saturday. Christmas comes early. Unbelievable! Welcome to this incredible scene. Bills. To the end zone! Chargers. It's a touchdown! An exclusive NFL game. That's fantastic! Live in primetime. Wow! Only on Peacock. With a Christmas gift to their fans. They're having some fun now. Bills versus Chargers. Saturday, 7.30 Eastern. Exclusively on Peacock. Apple Gift Card is a practical gift that unlocks a world of entertainment and fun. You can send it via email or give a physical card to your loved ones. Your friends and family can spend it on their favorite Apple services, including Apple subscriptions. Apple Gift Card can be used to buy all things Apple. Products, accessories, apps, games, movies, TV shows, iCloud Plus, and more. Visit apple.com for details and to send Apple Gift Cards to your friends and family this holiday season. Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation. The ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that, can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chillin' by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the Icon of Vacations. Icon of the Seas, arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. This episode is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear. It's snowing again, and that wind chill is killer. But you're not worried about that because you shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection. It's warmth perfected with tiny gold dots that reflect your body heat inside and protect you from the cold outside. No snow or chilly temps can stop you now. Go out anyway. Shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection now at Columbia.com slash infinity. Welcome back to another episode of the Blue Turf. I guess this is season two, and this is Stab Bell from the Kansas City Soccer Journal. With me, I have Eric Berger. How are you? How are you today, sir? I'm doing great. Got to spend some quality time this past week at the world famous Kansas City Soccer Dome. So I know we're going to have a lot to talk about as the Comets move forward in preseason, getting ready for that home opener against Milwaukee Wave on November 26th. You are such a professional with that. Um, well, that's why you do that, and I, I just I just do pods. Um, <laughs> I know we were both at the soccer dome, some of it at the same time, some of it not at the same time. What stood out while you were up there, sir? There are a lot of people in preseason camp is the first thing. And so what's funny is, is you go to the dome, and they have new training tops this year. They're white with uh, black trim. They look really sharp. You see some players that are familiar with their names on the back, and you see some players that you may know their name, but you're not sure of without a name on the back. And so there was a, a, a definite mix there, both in terms of field players and then a cast of characters at goal, and we can talk about that as well. Yeah, and there's even a, a player or two running around out there with uh, names on the back that we know they're not who they are. Well, we all share, I guess, in Kansas City. So ultimately, it's one team, one gear. From uh, from all those people out there, is there anything that stood out of, you know, the actual play, the the style? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll pick on a couple players that popped up. So this was the first time we're going to get to see Zach Reggett for a full season as a Kansas City Comet. He is in form. He played with the U S team in uh, Dubai uh, the last couple weeks and he looked hungry to go. He was making runs. He was scoring goals and he was encouraging his teammates in uh, what I guess you would call it simulated half court or half field drills. And so for me on offense, he definitely stuck out. We got our first view, at least I got my first view of a uh, new goalkeeper, Philip Ejimadu, who came through the LAFC system in MLS, played on a few USL teams and was recommended to Kansas City. He looks strong in practice. So I think uh, we're going to have a battle for goalkeeping minutes here in Kansas City, which if you talk to coach Stefan Stokic, which I had the ability to do, he wants competition. He wants players that are hungry, and I think we're going to see that. 
Yeah, he's uh, he's looked really good for a guy who's not played a lot of indoor at this point in his life. And he's going to be pushing Neto, and Neto's got a battle to be the, the regular starter, I think, at this point. I think the other two goalies in camp are really battling for a third-place spot. Yeah, so Chris Frederick came in. He played with Florida Tropics. Florida, for a variety of reasons, had to rotate goalkeepers, some of which was due to visa issues with a couple of their goalkeepers. So Frederick does have a lot of experience. If you uh, follow him on Instagram, you will see he is a uh, fairly well-known celebrity, has a lot of followers, definitely has experience. And then Tito, Tito Favela is back, who has experience not only as a Comet, played a little bit uh, this past year in a game in Milwaukee, played for the uh, St. Louis Ambush, but also has M2 experience as well. Yeah, he's, uh, I, you know, he definitely looks like a quality third place guy at this point i will both of them to be honest i've always seen fredericks a few times last year and then in training this year but the that i think that's where it's shaken out is a battle for first and a battle for third right now and we'll see we don't know how many goalies they want to maintain on their final roster and and it's the same we can say uh in terms of field players but uh, as i said earlier that there were a lot of people on the floor of the of the soccer dome so uh, what, what's been interesting to see is the online prognostications in terms of who's going to win it all, who's going to place whatever in the playoffs. And I'm thinking to myself, we don't even know who the final roster is. And so for me, it's a little early to make any predictions because I couldn't even tell you who's going to make the final cut yet. Well, let me rephrase that. Yes, we know which players are coming back, but ultimately how the final roster is going to shake out. And there's a, there's a few players that were in training camp who are not signed yet that I think will be immediate impact, but they're not signed yet. So we can't talk about them. And ultimately we don't know what is the final team that, that coach Stefan Stokic is going to turn into the league for their, their opening season roster. Of some of those people that's in camp that we can't talk a lot about yet. There are, Young guys, there's a, a potential returning veteran who's out there uh, that's not officially signed yet. So I, I think there's a lot of talent out there. But some of those young guys that they brought in that I was watching, I'm I'm like, sign them now, sign them now. Well, they, they went into the combine last month and drafted three players and invited them into camp. And what's been good is, they're still battling for positions, which which is great. There's also uh, something we've seen in the last several years that is somebody who has come up in the SKC system in training camp as well. And so I think it's going to be an interesting mix of new and old, but it also reflects the philosophy and the philosophical change uh, with Stefan, uh, Stefan Stokic taking over as head coach. He wants competition. He wants people who are going to work like he did, and he's putting a premium on the transition game. I don't know how many times on air last year I talked about the Comets getting beat on the counterattack. I'm hoping not to mention that much at all this season. Uh, yeah, let's. I know that they're working on it really hard. Uh, stepping away from the player side of it for a second, this we're we're doing this on Saturday two weeks into training camp, another two weeks left before the uh, the first game. We'll, hopefully we'll get another one in there previewing it a little bit. But I, I watched a couple of pretty serious scrimmages in this. You know, I, they're always doing scrimmages, small-sided stuff or, you know, full field things, but some like very realistic game situations. And last week they ended the week with a, a, a game and the two sides, I was looking at it originally as, there's a younger side and an older side, not explicit, you know, not exclusively that way. But when I asked uh, Stefan about it after the the practice, he goes, no, that was one side was supposed to be full on fast transition. The other side was more of how we played before. And I wanted those guys to see the difference of how I'm, I'm talking about this and the fast transition side, which was the younger and more inexperienced guys actually won that one by a couple goals. Yeah, I think that for many fans, 
they may not perceive a, a difference in, in terms of philosophy since uh, Stokic was assistant coach last year, but there's definitely a change in mindset. And we go back to how he grew up as a player and then who influenced him as a coach, Vlatko Andonovsky and those Comets teams in the mid 2010s, high impact transition quality on all ends, starting from Waltman moving up. And, and I think that you're seeing Stefan put a stamp on this team, which is very different than what he could do as an assistant coach. Yeah. A lot of uh, emphasis on if you have the opportunity, you need to be going, not holding play up. You need to be taking advantage of any opportunity to, to uh, have an odd man rush to take a space. If you, if you, if you weren't doing that, you got chewed out, whether you were a young guy or an old guy. Yeah. Let me, let me, offer something here not to fan the flames of Milwaukee versus Kansas City animosity but there was a wave player whose name shall go nameless for now who made a, a comment online about Stokic being a defensive runner so in other words what does he know he was a defensive runner when he played hence he can't be a good coach I think just looking at the Kansas City Comets history that there's no logical connection bet between how good a player or a coach was when they were a player versus their coaching record right I think it's a mixed bag and to assume that Stokic who who didn't score 300 goals in his career somehow that disqualifies him as as being a good coach I think that's really short-sighted because again without mentioning names that I think we can look back in recent history both comets and attack and you can see a, a few players who were exceptional during their time but they couldn't make the transition as head coach in terms of winning championships so i think stokic has a mindset in terms of what he brought when he played i think stokic has a mindset in terms of what he learned from winning that championship under vlatko andonovsky and and what he wants to do both at Cable Dom Marina, and I'd say more importantly, Thad, a team that's lost its swagger on the road. It used to be the Comets would go in on the road and, and they would thump teams. And when's the last time that the Comets had a winning record on the road? I think we'd have to look back several years since that's happened, but it used to be the norm rather than the exception. Oh, that's a good question. I'll, I might uh, go look that up, but that probably just guessing is back to the Vlaco days. I mean, it's been a long time. There was, there was times of Vlaco as the coach. It almost got a little boring because there was, uh, they were winning by such big margins at home and winning everything on the road. It was not that you want to be a bad team, but you know, there, there wasn't a, a great storyline there because, Oh yeah. Comments won again. Yep. Comments won again. Well, and, and, and bringing back that it's not just swagger. It's, it's, the mindset if you think about a team like the san diego soccer's the soccer's come into your town fans are already nervous home team players are already nervous because that expectation is built in that here you have a team that's going to dominate you one way or the other that's what we need to see here in kansas city is a return to that mindset where every game is winnable as opposed to you look at the schedule and you think, okay, we can afford to lose that one. There's been too much of that in recent years. Yeah, it's it's going to be a different mindset from end to end. And uh, following your trend of not mentioning that guy's name and from Milwaukee, I think it's a fairly small-minded comment If because if you look at coaches around the world, outdoor, indoor, uh, you know, other professional sports, even the greatest players don't always make the best coaches. And sometimes they make terrible coaches. Uh, That's totally fair. It's how you understand the game. Uh, you know, I, I don't remember Pep Guardiola being the greatest goal scorer in the world, but I think he's a pretty damn good coach. So. Yeah. All right. And, and speaking of coaches, very different looking technical staff, he brought in experience at the youth level, which again, I think he's looking for a mindset. So he brought in 
Matt Gordon from KC Athletics, Kai Marty from Alliance FC. And so these are people who share his philosophy, share his intensity. And I think that you're going to see a, a, a different stamp on this team and, and hopefully one that Comets fans will get really excited about right out of the gate. Oh, for sure. It, I, I knew uh, one of those uh, assistant coaches now from my, when my daughter was playing and just, I think it's a, a little bit different in that they're not looking at those guys being the uh, experience to help the indoor game as much as the experience to help refine things, make it more organized to make Stefan a better coach as his first year as a head coach. Is that, you think that's a fair way of looking at it? I think that's fair. That's a fair way of looking at it too. And um, I, I think always one of the challenges of the player coach system is trying to get clear the player coach's role on the field versus the bench assistant coach. And, and you can go back throughout indoor soccer history. And, and in fact, I mean, I think that this would be an, another interesting interview. Hopefully Alan Mayer has uh, healed from his experience as a player coach in Las Vegas, but it's difficult sometimes not only in terms of putting your your stamp on the team philosophically, but just the mechanics of that, what's your role on the field versus the bench coach. And so it, it was a difficult challenge, the system that the Comets tried with Leo Gibson as, as player coach. And I don't think any disrespect at all to, to Leo uh, in, in either role as a player, as in a coach. It's just sort of a, a challenge mentally, philosophically to kind of get clear what are we trying to accomplish when somebody is having to do two things at once. Yeah, I do think Leo would have been a better coach. I mean, he was a good coach, but I think he would have been a far better coach if he was just coaching. Uh, he didn't have that luxury, though. We we talked no. about this all last season, Thad. If you recall, they went into St. Louis that first week. He didn't play. They lost. And it was very clear because they were having visa issues and, and other challenges that he was going to have to put himself on the field. He wanted to be the head coach, but circumstances didn't allow that. And he had to put himself in very different situations. He's playing target. He's playing on the back line. He's playing sixth attacker, all sorts of situations. He had to put himself in at the spur of the moment. And now they're going to try a different game plan. And, uh, and and we'll see how it goes. But if we've learned anything over the last several years, that is because of the visa issues. Depth is a premium. You need to have quality people up and down the roster because you never know what's going to happen to your starters or your perceived starters. Uh, that's for sure. And I think that they, they're going to have depth pretty much everywhere. There's like maybe one line where we got to have, uh, we've got to take a look at they don't necessarily have that depth yet. I think they're working on some issues there. Uh, so I kind of said this earlier, like there was a lot of young guys there that I think are, have a potential. There's a, a, a potential returning veteran. And I was talking about Leo there. He is, he has been practicing with them. I, I actually fully expect that he will return at least for a year as a player at, that he can just focus on playing and kind of have a little more fun with it. The, the high-speed transition game may not be as suited to him as it would have been in years past, but I think he could still be a guy who can come out and contribute a lot, especially when somebody else is deciding how many minutes he gets. Well, but go back to the, the comment about Stokic being a defensive runner. Leo doesn't have to play both ways. Transition, as long as he can get off the field and a defensive runner can get on, and, yeah. and Stokic mastered that as a player there is a way to do this and get everybody what they want as opposed to making people do things that, that doesn't fit their game. And so indoor soccer history will show you the value of defensive runners. Teams have won championships really embedding this in rather than assuming that their targets have to be able to go back and forth and back and forth. And, and I think Kansas city has players with, pace payers players who will chase the ball up and down the field just like Stokic did when he was a player yeah very true uh, so looking at where leo would obviously fit in the most likely is forward 
Uh, I know they may have different versions of how they're utilizing those forwards this year, but at, at forward, you have obviously Zach Raggett, uh, Rian Marquez. Is that where we're going with? That, that's what he told us. Rian. He should just go single name, Rian. That, that would be works. awesome. That's a, I'm going to talk to him next time and ask him. Just go with Rian. Um, Junior Kazim and Leo Gibson, if he returns. Probably a couple other guys who can fit in that role also, but that's that would be your probably four right there that would be target forward, uh, you know, maybe even a secondary forward, if, depending on how they're doing this. That's not a bad group there. No, I'd say better than than not bad. I think it's it's a, a group that can score a lot of goals. I, I think it's what's interesting when you start making distinctions between forward and midfield is depending on how the teams set it up. Is Ian Bennett a forward or a midfielder? No, he's not a target. I still consider him a forward rather than a midfielder. And so in, in the days of yore, there used to be a, a two forward, one midfielder system. And we've kind of gotten away with that in the modern era. But for all intents and purposes, I, I expect the Comets to have two forwards out there. On In some cases, maybe a target and then two midfielders. But I think they want to put as much offensive firepower out there on the field when they have the ball. And so it, it, for me, it doesn't really matter what, what the roster claims we'll, we'll have forwards on the field. Uh, no, I, I agree. It's uh, I'd almost rather just say defender and attacker at this point. Cause sure. But even in that regard, how many times does a defender go out and set up in a, the opposing corner to, to win that ball? It's, it's just the way the style is their indoor is so different than outdoor in that regard. But even with outdoor, I mean, you look at sporting, you often have the outside backs all the way on the opposing end line to play the ball in while you have the, the forwards farther back than them. So it's, it's just, it's more of a, you play the sport and you go where you need to go. So. This episode is brought to you by Google pixel, the official fan phone of the NBA and WNBA. The new Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro are built different. How? Take the Audio Magic Eraser tool. It helps block out distracting crowd noise so your play-by-play -play commentary sounds crystal clear. The only phone engineered by Google brings out the audio you care about so your videos sound as crisp as they look. Learn more at googlestore.com forward slash Pixel NBA. Audio Magic Eraser requires Google Photos app. May not work on all audio elements. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. You might say all kinds of stuff when things go wrong, but these are the words you really need to remember. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. They've got options to fit your unique insurance needs, meaning you can talk to your agent to choose the coverage you need, have coverage options to protect the things you value most, file a claim right on the State Farm mobile app, and even reach a real person when you need to talk to someone. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The holidays are a time to feel and create joy. And what could be more joyous than the look on her face as she unwraps a stunning new jewelry piece from Blue Nile? How about getting 50% off your purchase? Blue Nile offers premium quality, priced below traditional retail. Their online experts are available 24-7 to answer any questions and make sure you've picked the perfect gift. For a limited time, you can get 50% off at BlueNile.com. That's 50% off at BlueNile.com. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And and I think that ultimately you mentioned some names, they're all going to have to get out on the field and you're not going to have four lines rotating. So don't be surprised that you would see more forwards out there rather than just a one standard target forward with midfielders making a run off of him. So while we were talking, I was trying to confirm a few things and a little bird has told me that Leo is a done deal. He will be back. How about that? Well, we'll wait for the uh, announcement on social media in terms of when it's official. But yeah, I, what I saw out there, he looks like he's ready to go. He understands what his role is out there. And uh, I, I've had some exchanges with uh, broadcasters uh, in, in the MASL who are wondering how is this going to work? And uh, you know, it's, it's ultimately about chemistry. Any winning franchise, they're going to figure out the chemistry. And that's something that 
we'll see how how Kansas City does this. If if you're a professional, you're going to be a professional regardless of how your role changes. And I expect Leo Gibson to be a professional and uh, to do what he can this year to help Kansas City win the Ron Newman Cup. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I think I don't think Leo's going to be. Uh, oh, I was a coach and do this. I mean, he's been very in the the times I've been there, he's been very quiet and letting Stefan coach and do what he needs to do and uh you know he i'm sure on the field he will be a vocal leader when he needs to be and will be quiet when he should be i I think if if we've learned something not only from this past masl season but since you mentioned sporting kansas city really job one is getting your team into the playoffs and once you get in the playoffs anything's possible so we saw an masl last year san diego the presumptive even before the season started three P champion did not retain their title and Milwaukee, the Eastern conference champion got beat at home, got swept by Baltimore who wasn't even allowed to play a home game. And so what we found is in indoor, anything's possible. And more recently with sporting Kansas city, you have a team that in some ways backed into the playoffs and, wound up knocking off St. Louis city. And so step one is get into the playoffs and the Comets made that road very difficult for themselves last year, but, but you basically need to have a mentality that we're in it to win it. And and I think that the season is going to show us to what extent that mentality has evolved for this franchise. And uh, I'm optimistic. I, I think there's a few pieces that still need to be signed where you're going to hear me say, this is a team right away that will compete for the Eastern conference title, but they're not that far away. No, the, uh, the, the biggest uh, obstacle I think right now for them to be really high in the standings is their schedule. They have a very tough schedule. They're playing all the best teams. They're not playing the easier teams as often as they would have in the past. And, a lot of the teams that were weaker have strengthened. So it's it's not going to be easy. Well, I think that's fair. The other thing I would say is, uh, since I mentioned Milwaukee, they've loaded up too, joining uh, several teams in that Florida Tropics fire sale. So kudos to Kansas City for getting two Tropics. We haven't even talked about Chad, ben- Chad Vandergriff yet, but you have Chad Vandergriff, a former Defensive Player of the Year, who was named last year to the elite six team for, for the MASL, but Milwaukee wound up signing one of the best players on that tropics team, let alone the league wide Ricardo Caballo and Breno Oliveira. So you have a team that won the East that has gotten better. Kansas city has obviously gotten better, but if you believe statistics that, Milwaukee has the easiest schedule in this in the league based on their opponents records last year. So you talked about Kansas City's tough schedule, combine that with Milwaukee's maybe more favorable schedule. And if you put me on the spot, I'd say Milwaukee is the the odds on favorite to repeat as Eastern Conference champion. That being said, you ultimately have to win on the field and not in Internet groups, not in preseason prognostications. And uh, the proof's going to be in the pudding. That uh, you spoke earlier about, you know, teams having chemistry and how they work together. I think that will be more in Kansas City's favor than perhaps Milwaukee's favor, knowing some of the players that they have and have signed. Don't want to specifically call out names right at the moment, but I just have a little more faith in Kansas City on that end of the 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 benef- the, the, the plus side. I, I'm looking at the wave roster right now. I mean, on paper, this is a team that could compete and and could compete for the championship. There's no doubt about that. But chemistry, yeah, they are talented. They are talented. Yeah, chemistry is an X factor. And uh, what's interesting and, and different this year is fans have been, Comets fans have been constantly lamenting, why do we have to play Milwaukee and St. Louis six times every year. Well, yeah, St. Louis is going to be another six times, but Milwaukee is only once. And that's going to be that home opener at Cable Dom Arena on the, on the 26th. 
I can't stress enough how important that is for a couple different reasons. One is if you think about tiebreakers down the road, they're going to play each other only once, right? And it's also setting a marker for the rest of the season. Both these teams are going to want to show that, hey, we're the, the beast of the East and there's no love loss between these two teams. And so I expect a, a really competitive battle early on, something you would expect to see later in the season. But circumstances have thrust this right at the, at the start. All right. So uh, I know we, we talked a little bit about the forwards. We haven't really talked about the midfielders, but there's a very strong group there at the moment. Defense is probably where we have the biggest question right now. Um, they br- did bring in Chad Vandegrift, who – as you said, was MASL Defender of the Year the previous year, all all six uh, selection last year, experienced, he's been around, he's he's a really good, solid defender, better than just a solid defender. He's one of the best defenders. You combine that with Ray Lee, uh, Sosa, who, you know, really I consider him more of a midfielder than a defender at times, but he's so, you know, that's his uh, official role. There is... Uh, there's a hole there though. I think that they need to have more defenders. Uh, Debray Holloman is there. I'm trying to remember who else is officially listed as defenders right now, but they probably uh, need so, one. Uh, there's the, the big question James talked about is listed as a defender who had an unfortunate injury last season. And so there's sort of questions about his availability. I think that the thing with John Sosa, there is no doubt he is one of the best playmakers in the league. There is also no doubt that Comets put him in a lot of difficult situations last year on the transition game because he was forced to be last defender on odd man rushes. And so he he had to get really creative defensively in these odd man rushes, but he's not going to be somebody who's going to step for step, pace for pace, compete with, with you know, opposing forwards. That's not his game and he shouldn't expect to have to do that. And so I think that, the moves they've already made and some potential moves coming in will solidify stay at home defense that will allow Sosa to play his game. And his game is playmaker creativity, get into the opposing third, not only the assist game, but also the shot game from, from the yellow line. And so it's in John Sosa's best interest for the commas to solve this Ray Lee two-way player, his left foot is still deadly, but it, it seemed like last year the Comets couldn't quite figure out how do we want to use Ray? Are we going to try to create opportunities for him to score? Or do we need him to be a tweener? And so I'll be looking at him this year is if if they figure out the lines and figure out who's going to be staying at home, how do we maximize the scoring opportunities both with Sosa and Lee? Yeah, I'm. I will say that I do not think Togba will be back this year. Uh, I'm gonna say that that's uh, based upon informed conversations that I've had, and I think he will end up playing somewhere else. Just uh, it was. There you go. You said it. I didn't. Yeah, that's yeah. It's your I'm, show, and I'm a guest. That it's our show. It's our show. I just. Uh, <laughs> I could be a little more risky with what i say then you can that's uh i think that's fair to say yeah and I, and that's totally fair it's uh, you, you're on here to be very knowledgeable and experienced and be the the professional i'm on here to be a little bit less so but i do i'm highly confident togba will be playing elsewhere in the league if he's playing this year so again they'll have to have to figure this out and and togba's game last year he really pushed forward too. It was, in my opinion, before he got hurt, he was the team's MVP. And then there was a, a huge challenge to them in terms of defensive balance once he left. But they still have opportunities between now and the 26th to plug in a few holes. And as you mentioned earlier, in terms of what you saw in that scrimmage, it's a different mindset. There's going to be more transition. And there are a lot of guys' names that we haven't mentioned that will fit in one way or the other. And I'm really bullish on Cisco Lopez. We haven't talked about him yet. Another local Kansas City player that they scouted and they brought in. 
I saw him in a scrimmage earlier this year, score three goals at the soccer dome. And so there's quality there, but there's a difference between being exceptional in a scrimmage and when it's real game time in an MASL arena. So it's going to be interesting to see Cisco and a few other players who are, who are more junior on the roster being able to rise and, and step up and when put in real game situations. Yeah, I think he's, he's a, uh, he shows a lot of promise and I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on him to perform right away because he is that young guy and still in the transition to the, the indoor game. He is definitely showing some uh, quality at, I saw him make a, a shot yesterday that I think would have been, would have scored on any keeper in the league. And it was far corner, upper 90, beautiful shot. And, He's he's showing that he's also showing that okay what the heck should I be doing at times so he's he's got to learn that and that's that comes through actual games lots of practice with people around you that's better than you and that that time so he he will be a good player back on the the back line though is uh one of the draft picks the second round draft pick Antonio De La Torre Tony I think they call him and yep. He's impressed me so far. Uh, again, I don't think he's you know top two defender right now, but he's a guy who looks like he could step in and if he's given a chance to play, could become a really good defender in this league. Has some indoor experience, and I, I saw him play in college, uh, Fort Hayes State, when they were in town playing Rockhurst. His brothers played at Park, so I have some knowledge of the of the dilatory soccer family, really big in Dodge City, Kansas, and uh, Dodge City has an M2 team, the Kansas Bandits. Tito played there as well, and so he, he he's not your typical college player who maybe played a little bit of indoor. I, mean, I think he he comes in with more indoor experience than your your typical first year player, but. Ultimately, you have to make the roster, and and Stefan Stokic is going to have some interesting decisions when it comes cut day. Yeah, and this is not based on any inside information, but he's one I would expect to be signed just based upon past history and how he what their need and how he's looked in training. There's been a couple other guys who I'm not going to mention names because I don't know if they're supposed to be there or not, quite honestly. Uh, but they that have looked good that I think would be very potential signings. But I still think defense is where they need to shore it up the most. Uh, we've talked about that on here already a little bit and in person when we were chatting. Uh, what else do we need to try to cover on this one here, Eric? A, a big week coming up. They have media day, which will include uh, live appearances by 810 crew and uh, Nick Vassos. Fox 4 is going to be live there, so... If you have an opportunity, Comets fans, on Wednesday, tune in to radio, tune in to TV, or do both at the same time and uh, see what you see, hear what you hear. But they're ramping up for that Milwaukee game, and uh, I'm excited to see who makes the final cut and uh, what team shows up at Cable Dom Marina on the 26th. Yeah, and when we conclude this, stick around for a few minutes. There will be a episode or an interview with Chad Bandegriff. He... He and Zach Reggett had been in uh, the Middle East, Dubai, I think. That's right. And with the World Mini Football Tournament, and they didn't go as far as they wanted to, so they were a little disappointed with that, but it meant they were back in training camp uh, middle of last week, and both showed why they they were so good. That's right. Any last words, Eric? Season's coming soon, sooner than we know it. Really excited for that home opener and excited to see who makes the cut and who's going to be the the standout players, but the surprise players on this roster as well. It will be entertaining. I think uh, I think the season will be very interesting. For sure. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Let us know what else you would like us to talk about in the future, and we will uh, – have new episodes at least one i'm sure before this season and breaking it down a little bit more appreciate the time eric as always and stick around to listen to a little bit from chad see you soon thad appreciate it we're out
is Thad Bell with the Kansas City Soccer Journal. I am up at Kansas City Soccer Dome with Chad Vandergrift. Is that the right way to say it? That is. Perfect. All right. All right, man. Chad, welcome to Kansas City. Thank you. Thank you. I know you've only been here a few days because you've had a, some, a lot of travel lately, but what's been your experience so far here in Kansas City? So far, so good. I mean, um, when I got here, uh, it's been busy. All soccer. Um, two a days. Um, very organized, um, very difficult, but but it's great. Um, you know the direction that this team is going, and that Coach Stokic and the other coaches um, have prepared for both the sessions. Um, you know it, it's intense, and it's preparing us. Season's right around the corner. I know it's coming up rapidly, but uh, I mean you, you should be in pretty good game shape because you've been playing recently, right? Yeah, I was playing um, for about a week or a little over a week um, out of the country. So uh, I missed the start of the preseason here. Um, uh, so just trying to get caught up and, and get to know everyone. This is my uh, fourth, fifth day, you know, so. Uh, and doing two a day, so it's not been easy. But uh, was, I, I didn't see you for much of this practice. Did you have a little knock? Or? Yeah. Well, I did, what, half of it. So um, just just the muscles, quads, and, and hamstrings. Uh, but nothing too major. Just trying, trying not to let it get to that point, you know. Yeah, because uh, they will definitely want you available here in a couple of weeks when they open the season. So. <laughs> yeah, but, but I, I love to train. So um, I love to train. So I'll I'll be out there as much as I can, you know. I I, I uh, fully believe and just put it in the work, just like everybody. So, um, yeah. When uh, I know I talked to you once earlier this year when uh, you signed officially with Kansas City, but what made you come to Kansas City when you guys when uh, when Florida folded or whatever the right term is? Yeah. What made you come to Kansas City? Yeah. Um, I think it's a great fit for just how I play, you know, um, possession, but but very blue collared at the same time. Um, I think I think it has both sides uh, with the personnel here um, and what Coach Stokic is doing as well. A lot of a lot of transition, a lot of fast soccer, um, possession, and, and all that. So a, a good mixture. Um, I think I'll fit in well. Uh, playing defense here, and the atmosphere <laughs> is incredible. Um, uh, not too far from home. Um, I know a few. Of the, I know a few of the guys. Um, playing, w played with some of them, and played against them for years. So, honestly, it checked off every box. So, I'm I'm super excited. Yeah, I know uh, Florida didn't always have a ton of fans. They had some very good fans, but not a lot of them. But so, how will it be to play in front of a full stadium with them actually cheering for you? Yeah, that, that's uh, that's gonna make training hard and and everything all worth it, right? Game day it makes you it makes you want to put in that that work and then feel a little rewarded, kind of. Um, you know, those are those are people. A lot of people here that come out and support you. So, um, you know. It's uh, I look as as at it as uh, exciting, um, you know, Florida, not not the most fans, obviously a lot of loyal fans, but um, yeah, the game days will be very special here at home. Uh, what do you I mean besides the fans? Maybe what do you first look? What do you look forward to? You know that first week of uh, that first game. That first game, uh, I mean, I, I think probably the same as most of the players here everybody's just been putting in so much work um, and then it's finally there right um, what you prepared for so you know you just don't you don't want to be too excited um, but people people will be excited I will be um, but yeah I think I think it's more of just it's finally here you know after a month plus all the off-season training um, but yeah the, uh, I know you're teammates with uh, Zach down in Florida and also with uh, the keeper, Fredericks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you already know them, but like the guys now that you're in training camp with the Comets and some of the new guys, some of the old guys, like who's impressed you now? Yeah, well, just playing in the league for, I think this will be my 11th season. Um, so I've, 
when you play in it that long and play against these guys for that long, you, you really get to, to kind of know them. So you walk in the locker room and it's not even really like, oh, it's, it's, it's more natural. Um, so a lot of the guys impress me. I mean, I, I know how some of them play from playing against them. I, I know their tendencies and the quality there, so I'm not surprised by that. And then just um, seeing a lot of the, you know, some of the younger guys and guys I didn't know, um, you, you know, I think there's a lot of quality here. And the the vibes and the, the relationships um, and the banter in the locker room, it's been really, really, uh, I've been impressed. You know, everybody's competing super hard. Everyone's super friendly. Everyone, it, it's just been, it's been great. And that's, that's the honest truth. So, um, I think that goes a long way. You know, it transitions to on the field. Cool. Uh, I know you uh, grew up in St. Louis. Played played over there. Uh, played for St. Louis FC. Actually played against Sporting in a Open Cup game. Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, Open Cup game. I, it was a it was the uh, packed house. It was sold out. I think twenty three thousand people maybe. Um, so that was that was one of my favorite moments. <laughs> What uh, I don't, like what was uh, like? There's been a big rivalry between St. Louis and Sporting this year, with uh, them finally getting an MLS yeah. team. How's that been? Or have you been uh, following that? I haven't followed it um, a- as close, but a few people just knowing I'm from St. Louis have been. <laughs> hey, have you seen that Sporting game? And, you know, letting me know how they how they what won the last two. Yeah. Um, so people here have kind of told me that i'm like oh okay yeah thanks for letting me know so so see now you're part of that whole rivalry thing exactly with the home and the new home all right do, do i have to pick i don't know i'm uh I, and for people who don't know i'm originally from st louis too so i grew up knowing all that history over there but i've been over here for so long i totally root for kansas city soccer at this point so. yeah um, actually your first opening game is against milwaukee another one of your former teams yeah so, is there anybody still there? Yeah, I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there's a lot of the guys still there, and uh, new guys as well. But um, yeah, I, I think we'll battle it out with them. I think they uh, have similar style to us, you know, Some veterans, smart players, um, mixed in with a lot of blue collar players, learning the game, athletic. So, yeah, right out of the gate, you know, I think that'll be a, a great great game uh, I know I, I was looking at the schedule and it looks like I think Kansas City has one of the toughest if not the toughest schedule and starting off against Milwaukee and then the Mexican teams and just it was like all the top teams in the league is what Kansas City's facing is that uh, something you relish I guess yeah I mean um, I don't have any control over the scheduling so um, it is what it is, right? And I think having tough games is, is good. I mean, you have to prepare and you have to get up get up for every game, no matter who it is. And you want to play your best soccer. So, um, oh, I like that picture. <laughs> um, uh, this is bad radio, but I just took a picture of him playing against Sporting Kansas City back in the Open Cup. So I, I probably shouldn't have done that. That's not the, the smart thing to do on a pod because it's a not a visual medium. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I... I um, I, th- I think the tough schedule is is good. That, you know, that's what we need. We're just one game at a time. Um, we've, we've had meetings. We, you can break it down into small goals, you know, five games, five games, five games. Um, but, yeah, there's – there's a, obviously you never want to take any team lightly, but we definitely can't do that with our, with our schedule. And I think we also have a lot of uh, – what is it, like nine different home uh, opponents – like nine different teams that something we play like that, at home, yeah. something like that. So that'll be exciting for for the fans as well. Yeah, it's a uh, last couple of years. It's been a lot of games against St. Louis, a lot of games against Milwaukee, and then you know really tough road games. So yeah, yeah, we have uh, a lot of a lot of crossover games with uh, different teams as well, and some long trips and, and things like that. But it's okay. It's okay. I think I don't think anybody is. Uh, nervous or scared here in this locker room so um we we want the challenge and just from watching a few of the practices now the the competition at every position is really tough right now i mean goalie defender mid forward uh, just every version of every player 
it, there's guys just competing for those spots. It's it's just got to be kind of intense but fun, right? Yeah, I I think that's good. You don't want to get complacent or, or think that no matter what, this is um, I'm playing here. And, and you don't see that with any of the guys that have played in the league for years. Nobody's acting like that or this or that. I mean, um, so the competition um, at every position is is out there. Um, and, and that's a great thing to have because it brings the best out of everyone, I feel like. Cool. Uh, I don't want to keep it too long because I know you got to get some lunch and then get ready. Oh, for those guys will eat all the food if you if yeah. you keep me up. No, I'm just kidding. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then you got to get ready for another session later. So, I, I just I guess one last thing is for the Comets fans that you haven't met as the as the good guy yet. What do you want them to know, and what do you want to say to them? What do I want to say to them? I I honestly I look forward to meeting a lot of them. Um, uh, a lot of people have reached out to me. Uh, very nice, said nice things, but. I look forward to getting to know a lot of them, um, uh, whether it's through events or after games or before games, um, getting out in the community. But I also, you know, I, I want to try to uh, give them a good product um, and, and play my best on the field. Uh, that That's my personal goal, and uh, I think they deserve that from, from me and also uh, – just the team. Cool. And uh, in, in case people did not know Chad already, he uh, he's been uh, MLS or MASL Defender of the Year. He's been one of the best defenders through all, most of his career. Knocks in a few goals. <laughs> uh, they can expect a lot from you this year, right? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I appreciate that, and, and all those things are great. Um, but it's a new year, new season, right? So what what can I do this season? Um, that's how I kind of look at it. Um, not like I don't care about those things, you know, those are great, but, you know, new season, let's see what you can do um, individually, but most importantly to, to help an organization and help your, your teammates. Um, winning, the personal things are nice, but, but winning is, uh, is my main focus. How can I help the team to win? Yeah, it's all about what's going on going forward, right? Right. And we are out. <laughs> Thank you.